Hello, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to Inkbound, the turn-based strategy roguelike from the creators of Monster Train that I'm extremely excited to be back to here today. I played so much of the demo and I absolutely loved it, and now we get to check out the early access version a little bit early here, ahead of its release on May 22nd. So let's pop on in and see what's new, what the game's all about now. In we are going to go. You wake up on the shores of an inky expanse, the Sea of Ink. In the dark ahead of you, a speck blinks a light and pulses as you move deeper into the void. The glowing mote of light blinks more brightly with your approach. As you reach to touch it, it inscribes strange glyphs into the air, some unknown language. Embrace the light? Yep. The light begins to surge, growing brighter and brighter until all you can see is light. And then, gone. A moment later, it blinks a light by your side, bound to you. All right. So I threw them into the sea and said, that's how you raise a child. <laughs> Maybe this is the one, Nib. Then the poor soul is a needless. You know as well as I that they are unable to speak or to bind. But they've bound a new quill. Author knows they don't like those needless very much, so something has to be going on. That makes no sense. These stories have been fading long before more quills started showing up. Best leave the needless to fall right back into the sea where they came. Aww. Why don't we at least let them choose their aspect and forms first? It'd be a shame to not even see what they choose to be. All right. So now we get to pick one of three classes here. Uh, so there are two new classes that are in the early access. We're going to need to unlock them as well. So there are five total that are going to be in the game. I'm probably going to pick the Magma Miner first. I really like to go in a top to bottom fashion. Uh, but also, it seems like if you checked out the demo, there are some things that are different about this class as well. On top of the fact that there's obviously just a bunch of new stuff. There's new enemies, bosses, spells, etc, etc. But I am going to pop on in and create my custom character here. There's a lot you can do. And I'm just going to do it off camera and I'll be right back. Well, alright. There we go. Cursed and all. Oh, one moment. I see one thing. Alright, basically nothing changed, but don't worry. Uh, all right, in we go. You can always change that later. I just, I gotta, I gotta go for it. In we go to a battle. Combat and inkbound is turn base. Right now it's your turn and the enemies are showing what they plan to do on their turn. During your turn, you can move with WASD. Try moving to the shining spot. Now try moving to the next glowing spot. It consumes a resource called Will, and it will not deplete until you use an ability. You have a limited amount of Will to use every single turn. The Unraveled are trying to destroy this world, so move near this enemy to prepare an attack. Your abilities are called Bindings. Click on the first one to start aiming. Move your mouse to aim the targeting area until the enemy highlights, then use the left-click mouse button... Wait. <laughs> to use the Binding. So, uh, a... Notable thing right now, if you have already seen this game, it seems like a large thing that's changed is how enemy targeting works. You see right here, like in the past, it was really easy to never take hits. It looks like they are automatically aiming at me right now. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to use the binding and we're going to go for a smack. Using a binding will also consume will, attack the enemies, and use up the remainder of your will. They don't want this one to die. Great. When you are done with your turn, you can click end turn. The enemy attacked during their turn. You'll need to watch your health to ensure that you stay alive. A blue glowing orb has now spawned at the start of your turn. You can collect these to reduce ability cooldowns. So it'll, it'll reduce every cooldown by one and it'll restore some will. So a thing you can do, though, is try and get it without spending a point. You see we're spending a will but it doesn't look like we can. Use what you've learned to defeat all the enemies and complete the combat encounter. I think I might be able to do that. So uh, the character, this is an interesting time maybe to, to talk about this. 
uh, has this built-in passive. Gain one ability power for every stack on five stacks. Gain three shield. Uh, so more or less, we generate a stack of heat whenever we hit an enemy. If we ever do an action that doesn't hit an enemy, then we lose all of our stacks. So we are kind of generating this heat by hitting things a lot. But a thing has been changed. This is new if you're familiar with the game. Uh, when you hit five stacks, you gain three shield. This is because the game has turned into a much more active kind of um, situation, it looks like, where you're going to be taking damage often. like, or There's going to be damage coming in often, but there's going to be more ways to prevent damage as well. It's going to be a little bit more give you and take. Needless. Looks like you're not dead yet. So that's a good sign. And the form you chose is wonderful. Sure. Yes, and you've bound a quill. Quite unusual. It seems the ink has plans for you. Oh, yes, it does. You've already performed bindings and everything. Quite the spectacle it was. Hmm, yes. A needless and a binder. Well, the guardian ahead will not be as kind. Should you defeat it? Perhaps you and your quill truly are fated for something grander than the sea. Or not. Brute. All right, so now we're going to go fight basically a uh, a boss here. But noteworthy, game is in, like, completely co-op as well. There's, like, it's very fun in co-op at that. So now you see we have an AoE. If we walk out of this, we take less damage. So here's the thing. I can't remember. Do we generate heat? Per every unit we hit. That does indeed generate three heat. Okay. So five heat. So that generates three shield. So we're almost taking nothing. So if we generate ten on five stacks, gain three shield. Can we generate... Can we generate it at ten? That, that is a question I do have. So currently we're taking none. I could, uh, if I stand in here, I obviously take some. Kind of like the idea of going for a smack. Grabbing this orb. And then, are we still in the circle? Yeah, we are. We're, we are until we move here. So we'll just do this. Sounds good to me. So I don't actually take the damage there. Our heat does reset now. Hmm. I mean, we probably could just go for this, which is do 144 damage. So we're getting lots of ability power. One ability power equates to 10% damage of any kind. There is three types of power. There is physical power, which is, you know, these. It'll say what it is. Physical, physical, physical. You can see at the bottom there. There's also magical and then there is ability power, which is just everything. Literally, any any of your damage will be increased. So yeah, I obviously can just kill him. Well, it seems you're a binder of some strength. Though you will continue to find these anomalies spread throughout our worlds. They're taking all the ink away from us, making our stories fade away. Bad little unraveled, bad. For now, though... It's time you leave this place and venture to the Athenium, the center and stronghold for all these worlds. They don't like us much in there, so best if we say our goodbyes for now. But don't you worry, we'll see you soon. The ink is not yet finished with you, Needless. Your form is young and still without purpose, but trust in your quill and you may just find it. All right, to the Athenium now. So we're going to be out of the tutorial, and we're going to be soon into just a normal full run. You appear inside a cavernous hall, <laughs> packed with emptiness, but full of stories. A massive clock of books and gears looms above the expanse, tick, tick, ticking away. From the countless black depths, damp breezes moan to life and stir the pages strewn about the rubble. Your quill urges you deeper into the cavernous space. All right, speak to the gatekeeper. So this is kind of like our hub world where we're going to be able to eventually unlock the ability to change classes, 
Uh, yeah, we can change our look already. There's all kinds of different NPCs and stuff. And this is where we'll launch out into different kinds of expeditions. Normal expeditions and ones that are called ranked expeditions, which is basically like the ascension scaling difficulty mode. And then there's like a normal mode. Arthur be damned. Another one. All you needless just traips in here, still damp from the sea from which you crawled. I thought that surely the inkbound had created you with more sense than that. Yet you all continue to surprise me. Well, you're in the Athenium now, needless. And no binder worth their words is going to give you unfettered access to our stories without a proper proving. A short dive into the ink should give us a good idea of you. And at the very least, knock a little sense into that empty head. Try not to drown too quickly. All right. Well, let's head in here. I saw there were some other things we could talk to. Rank dive. I'm going to say no for now. Uh, we'll just do what they're asking. Going for an unranked dive. All right. In we go to start our first run. Is this... Oh, they just made that, like, just an easier, more, uh, you know, visible thing. So, I, I will say some of these things are going to be unfinished yet. I believe this may be one of them. Uh, it's coming out on the 22nd. We get access a little bit early. Ha! Another needless. Always welcome sight to see another one of you running around our worlds. You're the ones doing all the hard work, after all. The Inkbound is trying, I'm sure, but you are the ones actually fighting those villains, nasty creatures. But you'll see that soon enough. And you can call me the scribe. But honestly, it's best you keep your meeting between us. As you approach the edge of the Sea of Ink, your quill picks up the trails of stolen ink tinged with the scent of the creatures that guard it. Your quill urges you to choose one of these trails, follow it, and reclaim the ink guarded by the foe waiting at the end. So yeah, there are three final bosses now. Argolath in the demo was the only one, so let's definitely check out something else. Uh, there's a quest. If you complete the, what, the quest at the bottom, you get a free legendary item, if they haven't changed it. Let's go with this one. Just do, two, two, like, 25,000 damage. I will try. Like, I'm gonna try and do that no matter what. Alright. Uh, pick a vestige. So we get a passive item. On your first turn, gain three stacks of stealth. 25% crit damage up. And stealth is... Plus 10 ability power on being hit with a direct attack, dodge instead and lose a stack. On using a binding, lose a stack, max 5 stacks. So, plus 10 ability power, that's 100% extra damage on the first 3 hits. Or we can use it as um, defense. That sounds great. Especially since there's not... We don't have a whole lot of magic damage. At least not yet. Now we get to augment a binding. We can basically, you see these 3 little pips... That means we have three slots for upgrades on every single weapon. Uh, I, or every single binding. 10% crit chance up, stacks of burn up, inflict stacks of burn. I kind of want to reroll these, get something cooler. But crit chance is not a bad call. I just, I want something else. Bolstering bonk. So strengthening smash does 45 more damage. But this is going to have a cooldown on it, a cooldown of 4. This bonk has no cooldown. We're going to be using it a lot. So I think I'm just going to increase the damage of my standard bonk by a lot. All right, now we get to pick uh, whatever the hell we want. This is basically just biomes right now. When you play ranked mode, ranked dive, which again, a reminder, it's kind of just the ascension scaling difficulty mode. Uh, they will have additional difficulty modifiers tied to them as well. And you kind of pick between, eh, which zone do I want and which... Um, which modifier do I want? Consume all bindings gain a two cost discount. Can only be used in combat. Underneath the brush, you can make out the remnants of a once well manicured garden that's been lost to time and neglect. The overgrown forest that towers over you now retains some of that stillness, but none of the peace, only danger and hostility. Okay. Quilling cage, that's gonna be money, or we can go for a tarnished vault. Let's grab that. Alright. Critical hits. Your binding has gained a critical charge. 
bindings have a chance to equal have a chance equal to your crit chance to gain this charge indicated by the flame surrounding them they will do bonus damage equal to your crit damage the next time they're used oh, this is new so we know when something is going to crit so my bonk does 100 damage though I feel as though it might be my best interest to just pop you. When this enemy loses more than half of its life, it becomes enraged, doing 100% more damage. So you're intending to do 4 damage if I get up to 5 heat, which probably isn't going to happen. So I have to spend 2 for that anyways. This costs 2. It's obviously a kill, but... We gain more heat stacks doing it this way. Oh boy. Okay, so we can't even do anything yet. I have to move up here if I want to get him. I mean, I think it's fine. Then we'll smack him with this. All right, that's a pretty easy way to take no damage is just to kill everything. We did that because of our stacks of stealth. It's going to be a little bit less easy to probably get that going. Yeah. So again, it is... This is a guaranteed crit, and it, but it costs two energy, two mana, two will. So basically, this is better anyways. Because I get more stacks of that in rage. Which makes sense. We we bumped up. Uh, wait. On combat end, this vestige gains one physical power up to three physical power. Which again is 30%. This has been changed. 30% uh, damage on these attacks is really what that's going to be. I'm going to say sure. We'll keep that probably for a while. Okay. So now we get to pick a new power to inscribe. Restore 8 health. So this is... I think this is going to be like a pretty decent size part of the game now. Which is... Since there's a lot of guaranteed damage coming in. Because before it was really, really easy to never take damage. Like the runs were either... They, they kind of got to the point where they were sort of too easy. Right? Too easy to just dodge every single hit. I don't think I want any of these. Burn damage crit... I mean, I got with crit chance, I guess. Uh, so... I think it's shifting more into like a slay the spirey kind of way where like there's damage coming in, you have to try and figure out how to mitigate it. It's basically telling me we have stats. Okay, An <laughs> just another just another 15 damage bonk. Okay. Get ready to enter the bonkening. Tower of bindings. Draft a new binding. Deal 30 damage to a single enemy. This is magic damage. Uh, damage spreads to nearby enemies. Inflict one stack of shock. Teleport a far distance away. On turn start, get a full cost discount. Huh. Or steal their money. I, I think I'll go with a blink. The fact that it... They changed that. It's... That discount is interesting. Tarnished Vault... Could be another one of these things. You know what? Let's go get some money. All right. Whoop. What is your deal? Countdown gain 30 shield. So basically, countdown is whenever two actions, because the number two is right there. Uh, whenever two actions happen, then you're going to gain shield. You're going to be dodging the first attack made against yourself. Man. But, a okay, so it blocks the first hit, and then afterwards, it takes a ton of extra damage. So this is, we are using one of our stealth, we're using our second stealth. Oh, I was hoping. I don't quite have enough. He's attacking in this big area. Hmm. If 
probably grab that. There's, there's no way. I think maybe if I uh, if I went about it a different way earlier. Because I have to move down here, grab it. Also, Blink will reset my heat. That's very important to know. Can't get out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump behind, do a little bit of damage, and get out of that radius while still hitting them. Eh, probably is a mistake, because it would be really nice to have the AoE right now. What are you doing? What's your plan? Okay, so I don't have heat yet. I'm going to use this to uh, grab here, because a reminder, it also resets your cooldown. Okay, so we've reset the dodge. Looks like I got three of them with, with one. Got a little bit of armor. Alright, if are you doing damage? It looks like you're maybe doing four damage. Okay. Can't quite get in there. But I'm also not taking anything, so this might be a good time to sort of readjust and run a little bit further this way, maybe. Because slowly the ink is going to move in here, and that's going to be something we have to care about. Because we will take damage at a certain threshold. If we end our turn in the ink, basically. Okay. Man, the second one of you takes more than two hits, we are absolutely going to use our Wham Slam. Okay, I think we just get up to 5 armor, and then we block this damage, and I think that that's going to be better than anything. I think this is the last wave, so I'm going in. I don't see anything else showing up. Get out of here. Restore health, poison damage, crit chance, or I could reroll. I don't have very many points to reroll. I'm just going to grab the crit chance and smile at this point. Heavy Leap does 20 damage. Shielding Blink, whenever you cast this gain to shield. I actually really like that, because I think I'm going to open a lot of my turns with that ability. Because we have our... Um, on turn end, or using a binding. So yeah, we lose all of it at the end of... Anyway, it just doesn't matter. Spend your money on heal and spend some hard-earned quillings. Uh... Rift in the story creates an opportunity to make it a powerful choice. It's kind of like an event. And this is... I think it's another, like, one of these augments. Or not augments. Vestige. You know, we'll get more money to spend there. We have, apparently we have a quest for that anyways. That's, yeah, another thing worth mentioning. Not that, I mean, that's worth mentioning too. Some people will be bothered by it, but I'm excited by the concept that the game could get developed for a long time. Um, explore the worlds of Inkwell as far as you can. So, we have all these quests that we can work on, and there's like, you know, milestones. We get extra kind of experience, unlock more, uh, more items and things that'll get added to the pool. There's quests to unlock the new uh, characters. Four spiked damage. I guess I'm going to go with crit. We seem seem to be going for, like, a crit angle. Inflict hex and shatter on all enemies. I don't remember what that is, but I'm pretty sure it's magic damage related. Glyph globule? What the hell is a glyph globule? If that was in the demo, I don't think it was called that. Every 25% of max HP threshold, this will drop some quillings. Defeating it will drop even more. We'll flee from combat after two turns. So, again, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I kind of want to do that first. 
Increase the attack of all enemies on countdown. At the end of turn, restore HP to all enemies. You really seem like you should probably go first. If you're going to heal everybody, it's a little bit weird, though. Good. We could just do a big, big bang here. I mean, I can't reach you otherwise. That is how much. Sure. Give me the money. We could also use one of these potions. Like, it's kind of a use it or lose it vibe. That's a lot of damage coming in. Because we're basically we're going to be getting a lot of um, okay. So you're doing three, you're doing three, you're doing three. We got nine coming in. I mean, wow. Where can we hit the most enemies at once? I think two is the most. Yeah, because there's no, there's no spot there. I guess I'll do this because I think I can get both of them. All right. Already helps. You had one health! Oh, no. That's not good. Increased attack as well, so you're doing five. I mean, this son of a gun. I do want you gone. I don't care about... I don't care about the cost discount here. It'd be a one-time thing. I would need them. I would have needed to use it earlier. But I think we're just going to have to take a little bit of a smack here. Unless I do want to use that literally just so I can bonk slightly easier. I'll tell you what. I'm going to do this because I don't think I... I don't think I care. Oh, Shatter. Okay. I understand Shatter better now. Okay, there we go. I didn't know that Shatter was basically the physical version of it. I think that that does help, though, right? Now we only take one damage. It's weird. Like, I wanted this guy dead because he's very obviously annoying. Okay. This gives me armor, and we want to do it first so that we... It, it's... It's all strange. We want to do it first. Ooh, guaranteed crit. You're not even hitting, but... Okay, move. And I can't make it to the other guys with this, so I'm going to have to move to do it. The good news is... Bonk. I won't be taking damage. All right. Yeah, this became a lot more tactical. Okay, what is a glyph globule? Okay, so that's more for, like, the reroll points. Gotcha. Burn damage, restore health. Can I, like... Um, can I get something even slightly useful for me? Okay, thank you. Crit damage. Not once have I seen physical power. All right. Uh, minus one cooldown on Leaping Strike. I mean, that seems great. Bonk could inflict a stack of burn, which is do 10 magic damage per stack. Uh, I'm going to save it. I think that we could do something else cool with it. Or just continue to make it the bonkening. But quick leap having a minus one cooldown sounds great. So one just means we can do it once a turn. Gain a powerful new binding or send one if your bar is full. An ally gains a stack of evasive and gains critical charge on a random binding. On being hit with a direct attack, dodge instead and lose a stack. On turn start, lose all stacks. And gain critical charge. I mean, that seems logical for us. This is 20 magic damage. Uh, and inflict frostbite, which is something we're not specced into. This could be good. Just steal a large amount of money. 
that obviously could be useful. But I like the idea of after image, and also it's new. I haven't seen it before. Go to the garden, Carver's Refuge. We now have quite a bit of money. So let's do it. Fishing spot. Pescatarian Delight. You just got a fish. Click it to use it, and using one will provide powerful boons that last until the end of your next combat. Left click to consume, plus one will reserve. So that's like our maximum will goes up. Nice job with those unraveled so far. But you ain't lived until you fought a raven as big as a house. Though you probably have a lot more holes in you once you do, huh? <laughs> Welly well, you're a shiny new needless, aren't you? Got a quill and everything. Bet you've got quillins to spare too, huh? Well, be buying or be moving. This place ain't kind to idlers. All right, to the shop it is. Ten movement. Ooh. You and your allies are immune to rooted and ensnared. Uh, and we get more movement per... That sounds so good. That's a new item. Training weights. I, I could take it. It's... I could take it or leave it. But I guess I've decided to take it. Uh, we have 184. Takes 50 to reroll. Feels like a waste. I certainly don't need to spend 75 quillings just to heal my one health. Let's go fight a boss. Alright. I think there's something about just teleporting into a better initial bonk spot. What is this? It turns starts. So Nim gains attack when we... Gotcha. It's fine. So there's goes our big critical thing. So whenever you pick up an orb, you also reset your like movement capability. I kind of just like the idea of getting out. Unless... We have the heat generated, and now we can smash. Alright, that's pretty good. That is quite a bit of damage done in one one turn. Okay. Again, it's kinda it's weird. Just doing it to gain the shield just in case. So does the crit go away once we do this? No, we, we get we get the ability to crit again. Phase shift. Immune to bindings until next turn. That I'm glad that that's been made a lot clearer. So it's actually a waste for us to even pick this up because it will stay. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Don't love that. So you're doing a big AoE blast. That's just that's just going to happen. Gap close there. Big bonk. This does how much right now? This is doing 117. It's actually better to bonk. I mean, it makes sense. We have not upgraded smash. But we've upgraded the hell out of Bonk. Guess I'll Bonk. Alright, are you doing that AoE pulse thing again? It's hard to tell. Okay. 
Okay. When this crits... Okay, a crit of that does do more. This generates enough shield where we're probably not going to be worried. Okay, now this is doing a lot more, but is it... It's still not doing 204 versus 110. It's... Let alone the fact that this gains a little bit more heat after. I've created a very stupid build in which I just do the funny smack over and over and over. That's optimal. <laughs> I, it will change. Ascend a binding. So now we can take one of our current bindings and uh, upgrade it into something else, basically. An ally gains two stacks of evasive and gains critical charge on two random bindings and a stack of swift, which is 10 extra movement speed. An ally gains five stacks of stealth and gains critical charge on random binding. I, I'm trying to process stealth because it seems too busted, but this does have a six turn cooldown, so. On being hit with a direct attack, dodge instead and lose a stack. On using a binding, lose a stack, max five stacks. It does not seem to imply that it goes away. So that does seem just better. Like, that seems quite, quite good. Minus one will cost on leap. Just makes it free. Larger area of effect and can hit more than one enemy. Spawn an orb near your teleport destination once per turn? Wait. This is getting silly. So, it, the orb being the thing that will reset its cooldown and give us an energy, and it's free, so it's basically like we're gaining one extra will forever. That's pretty dumb. We're gonna be using it every turn. That much I know. Restore 15 health, we get that for free. Font of Wisdom, restore health, magic power. I mean, hey, give me something that actually works. I'll take one ability power. Again, it's a 10% damage up. The Vengewood. Promenade. Let's head to the Proving Grounds. Sounds good to me. I like... I don't know. This is... For whatever reason, I think this is my favorite zone. I've always liked the idea of a zone that looks like it's supposed to be a tutorial zone, but actually is just a normal difficulty zone. Superior Vault or Quilling Cash. Sure. Uh, reduce all cooldowns by three. So we gain stealth at the start of combat as well. So, oh my. At the start of a turn, create a blight pool. Smash. I guess smash. Leap. Risking it a little bit, but I don't I don't mind. And then we'll pop this now. So we gain the five stealth. Which as far as I'm aware, yeah, it does it does stay. So using a binding does remove one stealth, which means this one as well. Um I think that's worth it still though. It's a little bit disynergistic, I can't deny. But not fully. I think I've already created a very dumb build. When hit, lower this enemy's attack. You have... You're doing 15? Okay, that's why you, uh... That's why you look first. Uh, so... Okay. Yikes. 
Yeah, I didn't realize you had 15 to start. Okay, right. now we can fully block that hit instead. Feels pretty good to me. Let's just use the stealth up. Was that a guaranteed crit? Is that what that was? Dang. Yeah, I feel like I got pretty strong. On the end of combat, drop a random potion. On consuming an item in combat, gain an ability power. 10% damage till the end of a turn. On hitting, inflict a stack of bleed, which is on turn end, 16 physical damage per stack. When being hit, deal 120 physical damage to the attacker. So, this archetype is way more interesting now. Because damage is common. I'll take the 10% 10, 10 damage. On hitting a 10% chance to spawn an orb. Quicken to blink. So, every single... this. Every turn. Oh my god, wait. Minus one cooldown on this is actually stupid. Wait, that's actually stupid. The, the chance to spawn an orb is really good, but this is dumb. Uh, powerful choice. Let's just do this one. We'll do the powerful choice soon here. Restore to health. Nope. This is my last reroll, so. Yeah. At least I got something useful here. Heroic Vault. Let's go for the rare one, or the hard one. Blink. Every turn we get to do that, even if we don't pick up an orb. And now if we pick up an orb, it gets its cooldown reset. It's free the first time. We could potentially stack up a couple things of armor. I'm getting kind of spicy with it. When hit, gain increased attack for the rest of combat. I would really like to kill you for lots of money, but... So maybe I shall. I mean, after we hit you that once there, we really got to keep going. There's no ifs, ands, or buts on that one. There's a chance that this is good now. 300. This does one second. Nope, still no. All right. You're really doing that much to me still? You're doing nine. Why are you doing nine damage? That is so much. And as far as I'm aware, there's no way to not take that damage. Correct. Intense shield. We could also just um, smack somebody once. And then pop on shadow image. Does that count as being hit? No. Okay, so everybody got some kind of a shield. What's that related to? Uh, you're the only one without it. It seems like it's you. You got you're going whoop 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 whoop. But then why are you not buffing up <laughs> this one? This poor sap. Kind of rude, man. Okay. Taking a lot of damage here. We have a... We got a crit in the bank. 
which is absolutely a worthwhile time to finally use this. Right? I guess I'm doing this then. Still taking damage. I mean, wow. What the hell? Uh, another buff boy. I don't think I can hit them both. We have the critical guaranteed slam. One orb per turn. Well, it still gives us the shield. The shield is not a once per turn. Oh, boy. Oh, we could hit them both. I thought there was no way. Okay, so we can always use shadow image. There's nothing wrong with that already. Because otherwise, this is just looking grim. I like the idea of getting out and then using shadow image. Ensnared. So I would, I would have been ensnared. Okay, there we go. Now we can finally get a freaking turn where they don't... Ooh, I don't want to waste this crit damage on something small. Um... Can I get both? Nice. Scoot on down. What's your passives? You just all have the ink passive. Alright. Two hits on you and you're dead. Is that enough? Is that enough? I mean, I'm taking what? Two damage? You're doing nine? Nine? That's four. That's four damage. I'll take less. Zoop. Smack. Smack and kill. Move down. Grab the orb. Move down. Not quite. There's really no reason to just not... <laughs> Smack, 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 smack. All right, Heroic Vault. Deal 35% more damage to dazed enemies on you consuming an item in combat. This vestige, this vestige gains two ability power. Ooh. That seems huge. In combat. So the fish can be eaten outside of combat, but let's not. Finally, physical power. Woo boy. An additional random binding gains crit. On hitting, inflict a stack of burn. If they're already inflicted with burn, also inflict one to nearby. Or mega smash. So this becomes actually worth using. Sounds very appealing. Suddenly, this is terrifying. 130 and now this does 480 now there is a reason to use it thank goodness all right uh current binding blink teleport a far distance away uh leave behind a trail of energy dealing 90 damage switch places with an ally or a movable enemy and gain three shield and gain three shield whoa if you gain switch with an ally gain three shield because this is in addition to the two shield on turn start, full cost discount. Now that's actually pretty cool. We swap places with them. And then we'll gain five shield. All right, let's spend some money now. Uh, 10% damage resist. On your first turn, gain two, uh, two stacks of spiked. For each damage resist. I mean, this seems good. 25% uh, crit damage. All of your movement bindings get a full cost discount. Um, 
that really only helps leaping strike but for what it's worth that is pretty good and we gain crit damage man it's getting tight though we're gonna have to swap some other stuff warp warp already gets the full cost discount so it really is just leaping strike but it means you can cast leaping strike for free every round is what that means which is an effective one increase it also helps us generate our heat more easily that's actually really good so the question is kind of just do i want to do i want to remove anything to grab this. I don't know that I'm really that into this binding. I don't think we can sell it. Pretty sure there's no way to sell. I thought that I would like this more, but I... Well, the thing is... Yeah, no. With shadow image, it's just not going to be that logical. Glyph globe. Heroic Vault. I kind of want more rerolls. More rerolls sounds good. Go, go, go. Phasing. Oh boy. That's a lot of health going away. Oh, that's right. We teleport. We change places with one of them now. Ooh, this is getting kind of, kind of nice. There's a lot of kills for very little. Um, okay, so that's right. How much health do you have? 500? What is this up to? I can't kill you. Can I kill you? I could. You're doing six? I'd be taking some damage. The other option is... Oh, wait. We have so much... More than I thought. Okay. Okay. I think we go for a smack. We just got a lot more done then than I than I thought we would. I'm also gonna click this in combat so that this theoretically, yeah. It's weird. So I kind of can use this for free. It just feels weird because then I get to do that. Uh, swap places with... Doesn't really matter. Hmm. That's a lot of damage. So you're doing... How much? You're doing nine. If I hit one more thing, I gain two armor. I'm up to seven. Or I could go for Shadow Image, which at this point we, we get to do so often because of uh, everything. I could probably kill you, though, right? Especially if we get a crit. Then we end our turn with Shadow Image. Good luck, nerds. Okay. Technically, we get to do that. Swap that so they're all in a row. Power orb lets us do another slam. We're kind of wasting our... Um, whatever, our, our stealth blast, though. All right. Surely you die to this. Yes, sir. But it is 500. How much could we do against you? I can't kill you in two. So therefore, I guess I shall bop you. 
flop you. Ooh, it's an item draft reward. Wait, they changed that. That's cool. Wait, hold on. I just realized we're... I thought that this was your circle. It's not a, uh... It's not just a random legendary anymore. That's that's so much better. I'm gonna move them in... A, just sort of in a row there. Okay. I mean, are we just hoping to get a lucky crit at this point? We should have uh, definitely done Shadow Image. I just didn't think that I had the cooldown back up so fast. Alright, so we go for technically that. That. This. That. Wow, we've created something stupid. Physical power, yes please. I do not need to restore no health. Inflict daze. Deal 30% less damage. Wait. Wait, shattering bonk? Inflict shatter. Receive 30% more damage. If you defeat an enemy with this smash, spawn an orb once per turn. Oh my god. These are all so good. I'm gonna go for shattering bonk because that basically is more or less a 30% damage upgrade. Okay, eat that in combat. Wait, why did I come here? Oh, I didn't have a choice. Gotcha. Chance the malform when hit gain increased attack for the rest of combat. Definitely going to use the fish. What am I going for here? So we've inflicted shatter, right? Or we can. That's gotten pretty pretty gnarly already. So I do bl I block this, but every time I hit you, your damage goes up. So I kind of want to do like a one of those into shadow image. And then I... Oh! You can't block that? Okay. Lesson learned. Okay, so you are now invincible this turn, so... I suppose the plan is just spawn orbs. Is there anything else I can do? Man, what so sad to see that crit there. I gotta make sure I spend the crit. So we have the warp. Ah, it's so weird. Thinking about the correct way to do this. Big blast. You are weakened to hell. We have these power orbs. Collect orbs. I've done it. We're at four heat. Is there an argument for shadow image first? I think there is. <laughs> okay. Uh, smash. Deal 962 damage to a single enemy. If you defeat an enemy, gain one cost discount and reset the cooldown to zero. 
Oh. Deal 962 damage to single target on hitting. Drop a moderate amount of quillings. On defeating enemy, drop even more. Let's go with the tantrum. It, notably, it does cost three now. Critical leap. Discounted smash. I think we go for it. I, I don't care if this costs one less. Now that we have tantrum, now we just... We got that huge boost, and it costs the same. The, the thing that was bad about it is no longer a thing. That's great. The familiar sight of Un within the vast expanse of the Sea of Ink bleeds together with the fragments of the story this villain hails from to create all to an altogether unsettling place. The villain lair, a dank and mutilated place cobbled together by sheer power of the unbound, residing in some unknown section of the sea. There's no story here, no intent, only chaos. Ooh, this is... Yeah, this is different as well. So this is like a section sort of themed around the boss we're going to get. And this is kind of like our final zone. Oh, that's so cool. Deals 50% increased damage, takes 50% increase. You are screwed, my dude. When hit, lower this enemy's attack. We're going to need to definitely get you out of the way. I thought that maybe I could. Oh, I can. Good. All right. so much um what's doing all that damage to me it's just it's you yeah you you are terrifying i mean i it's not that scary though i do have you dead three it, it costs two it's worth it there because now it only costs one, I could do it again. For science, how much does that do? So we need to do 224 with this. Can I? No. Wait, but I would shatter? No, hold on. Eh. Let's just let's just do a very very large sum of damage to this one guy. How about that? Okay. I like the idea of putting them all in a group if I can. Good. I do like the idea of potentially... Okay, hold on. I don't think I can hit both of you. But this crits. Let's grab the power orb. That kills in two, but we could just use this to sort of move a little bit. Move a little bit. Are you shattered? You're not shattered, so maybe I could... Uh, I was going to say, maybe I could kill if I do shatter. No dice, but I can't be mad at that bandage, right? You just can't be. Okay. How's he alive? All right, so we can't go for the big, big bonk. That's just quite a bit. I could try and teleport them together, but then we lose my um, my heat. Let's just we'll play it safe. We haven't even been needing to use our after image. It's crazy. On your turn, smite all enemies for 80 damage. All bindings have plus two cooldown, but when you use a binding... 
on using A binding reduce cooldowns by one. What the hell? Wait. Basically, uh, surely that doesn't apply to Bonk. Surely that does not apply to Bonk. Does that... I don't, I don't think so. On defeating an enemy, gain ability power to the end of combat. I, I'm not sure. I think I think we use a reroll here. Like it's that one, if anything. On using a binding deal, 130 physical damage to the nearest enemy. I mean, maybe we just do that. Um, so this helps me right away. And honestly, n probably not even that that much. The critical damage going down is a bit of a pain. I'll go for the pile of tiles. Minus one will cost. Larger area of effect now can hit more than one enemy. Now that's what we're talking about. That's what we that's why we didn't take the early upgrades, because now we got all these big stupid ones. Here comes Zebos, probably, right after this. Oh, I love what they did with run length. Cause let me tell you, uh, this was, you know, it's an hour and six, but that's plus the tutorial, and that took a while. So, the runs used to be, like, they used to be so long. They would, they could potentially get to, like, two hours. I really like this, and I, I don't feel like I don't have a build, right? I feel like my build is still very coherent. Hello. So, I don't know your mechanics. On defeat, create a temporary cleansing shroom which can cleanse Cinderpox. Inflict Cinderpox on players, dealing damage at the end of the turn. Defeat tangled reinforcements to create cleansing shrooms. Okay. How much damage are you doing? You're doing the big circle. Okay, I mean, it's a lot, but it's also understandable. <laughs> Requires one will to use cleanse. Okay, so it's Good. It goes away at that. It goes away. You dirty son of a gun. You son of a gun of a so and so. I can't believe that actually let me move you. I definitely want you at least to have shatter before I use the big blast. Okay, so now you're invincible. Why would I use that now? I guess it was to reset cooldowns, hopefully. Okay. Are you actually in the air? On turn start... Okay, so we're going to have to... Get rid of this fool. All right, so let's. Just hoping to move you a little bit closer. I don't know if that even worked. Okay, there. Yeah, I just wanted them in AOE smash range. I think that that is all I really needed. Okay, so we have the uh, the infliction on us as it stands. Okay, so I've reduced it, and now we can get out. So what are you, what are you doing? You're not actually doing, you're doing eight damage. So if you're doing eight damage, I guess I should just if I can shadow image, I should shadow image. 
I was gonna be taking that Cinderpox anyways, yeah? Okay. There's a power orb there still. Yes, sir. All right, we're going for a big old smash. We still have stealth here. This is going to be pretty hefty. But that was just while well, we still had our, our buff. I have the take one damage at the end of the turn per stack. I mean, you know, hey, whatever. It's clearly... So that, that other guy, you cleanse all of them. That's... That's the thing. It's barely gonna help. Level up. Oh boy. Alright, so we're gonna... I think we're gonna move down here. We have three points yet. So we can't reset. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to Shadow Image, which should block his move, at the very least. So now I have six Cinder Pox, which is actually worth trading away, you know, away a turn for, more or less. Can we, um... Yeah, we can. Notably, that doesn't hit. Okay, what about here? Okay. Alright, that's a reset. We can spend a will on the Cinder Pox removal. It removes all of the stacks. You're invincible again. Uh, I think I've already warped. I must have. Alright. Get that orb. I don't know if I can ever get that one down there. I think we might need to just... I think we need to just kind of go for a boring old turn here. And then we'll save that one for next turn. Is this even worth it? We gain a shield if we do this. Okay, this does not um, block that hit. It just, it can't block AoE. So are you going to go in the air again? You did not go in the air? Okay, you are going to die. Congratulations. That's hitting you? It's crazy that that hits you. Um, all right. One. Do I really... Do I take... That was for science. I gained Cinderpox if I end in there. Okay. That was the science. That's what I wanted to know. Goodbye. Win run. Get wrecked, bird nerd. We did it. We defeated Cinder the Nightcaller. We get all kinds of stuff here as well. Got an emote. <laughs> all right. Well, alas, alas, though. Man, it feels, yeah, it really does feel a lot tighter, which is not surprising after the, you know, after a period of time in the demo, but it, it really, if, Truly, truly does. Are you not dry? If you're to be counted amongst our ranks, at least wipe your feet. Arthur be damned. This Athenian will drown in the filth you track in well before the sea takes us. 
Be grateful the Inkbound places more faith in you than do I. Since you've decided to return, you'll find a few more of us that remain here. The Unraveled left us thin in numbers. We scattered after... <clears throat> well, uh, but many have begun to return. You were made to serve, needless. So, meet the other binders of the Athenium and help them in whatever meager ways you can. Hurry, then. Well, all right. So, there we go. Here is where we could uh, change our classes. These are the ones we're going to have to unlock yet. There is a new obelisk class, which seems like a tanky son of a gun. Build up strength to deliver a massive attack. Uh, create auras affecting nearby enemies and allies. So... We got those to look forward to potentially in the future. Let me know if you guys want to see more Inkbound. I would be very easily convinced, especially with this new version. I love the demo, but this version in just these few short months is really like a completely different... <sighs> the balance and framing of it is completely different uh, in a way that I think serves it very, very well. It's less drawn out. It's snappier. You get to make your decisions in a shorter time period. You get to make a build a lot quicker. You get to, you know, like, taking damage is inevitable, but also part of it now, which in some games I don't like. In this, it feels after that run that it makes a lot more sense to kind of treat it in a more Slay the Spirey kind of way. Like, I do fear the implication that... Perhaps every run needs to have some kind of a shield or healing now, but I guess that that's what the uh, the healing in the upgrade pools is for now. But all in all, I think the game is super fun, super good, and I'd imagine as a you know co-op, it's going to be even better than it already was. I just I really enjoy it. I really do. So hey, if you want more, let me know in the form of a comment down below. My name is Retromation. I cover indie games every single day with an extra specialty in roguelikes and roguelites. If that is something you are into, this is a channel that you should be subscribed to. Thank you, thank you, and I will see you next time. Bye!